It's a, a Swan 350, sometimes referred to as the Drifty 350 or the, uh, something like that. And uh, there's a story that goes along with this. Uh, we're going to use, you're going to see a contact that I made uh, after I do this introduction. Uh, so the, you'll, you'll see the transmit part there. It looks like it puts out about 150 to 175 watts. Uh, I checked it on, on most bands and that's roughly what it seems to, to do. But the story is, it had something in it called a VFO stabilizer. And um, it didn't seem to stabilize anything. In fact, uh, uh, it wound up drifting about 5,000 cycles uh, with the VFO stabilizer in. So I contacted the maker of the stabilizer, and the stabilizer is still inside, but it's disconnected. Uh, everything that's in there is uh, supposed to be in there. And um, if you want to reconnect the VFO stabilizer, it sells for about $70. Uh, but I didn't find it doing anything, but there was a reason probably for that. Um, when I made a contact, um, initially I drift, my, 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 my frequency was off about uh, 300 cycles. So I would receive on one frequency and transmit 300 cycles different. And spent a lot of time, on, we thought it was the stabilizer. Uh, but when the stabilizer was disconnected, the only thing that the only difference it made was I had to retune all the bands and get them back on frequency. Um, so um, you're listening to 10 meters right now, by the way. And it's, it's odd that this S meter works backwards. Uh, anyway, let's get back to the story. Um, I went on QRZ and got a, a lot of help from a number of different people, but probably the most help I got was from someone who really doesn't like me too much, N2EY, but he's very smart. He's very smart. And uh, he directed me in a number, couple of different uh, directions. And uh, finally, he said, check the... Uh, we found out that the, crystal, the carrier frequency was stable, but the crystal frequency, uh, the VFO frequency was not. And he said, well, check one of the last things. The last thing he checked, he said, is check the voltage going into the VFO. And when I checked the voltage going into the VFO, into the board was minus 16, supposed to be minus 10. And uh, out of the transistor, uh, in the transistor, it was uh, minus 8. And it's still supposed to be minus 10. So, uh... Here's what I figured. I disconnected it and took a battery, a 9 volt battery, and hooked that up instead. And the frequency didn't change when I transmitted. In other words, it stayed right on frequency when I transmitted. And then I hooked it back up the way it's supposed to be hooked up. And the frequency, <coughs> the frequency also didn't change. So what I'm guessing is at that terminal point where it goes into the VFO, it um, it uh, um, was probably a cold solder joint, and so because now it transmit, I had you'll hear in the contact after this. Uh, it, it does drift, but the whole thing drifts. Uh, the problem before was it drifted quite a bit on receive, and the transmit frequency was two, three, two to three hundred cycles off. Uh, now the trans transmit and receive frequency are basically the same and you'll see that in the contact I had um, because that contact was about 30 minutes and I did have to readjust uh, the frequency uh, on receive because it, this does drift it does drift as all, all of them do and as you, you've been listening to this fellow here now for about uh, uh, five minutes and, and it has drifted a little bit but Nothing like it was before. It was nothing like it was before. So that's 10 meters. I'll go through the bands. Um, so that's, uh, that's 10 meters. We'll go to 15. And the way you do this, you have to peak. You have to peak up. You peak up the tuning. And then we'll just show you that 15 is there. Yeah, 
So that's 15 meters. Now we'll go to 20 meters. You can see that's in the CW section. And that's uh, FT8, because you all remember. Oh, there's a guy from, uh, oh, he's in northeast Belgium. And there's a guy sending CQ at about the speed I can send CQ at. Wonder what his call is. He's a KC4. Now we're going to go to, I'm going to change antennas. So that we can go to 40 meters. Okay, so now we'll go to 40 meters. I'm just showing you that it receives. And you can hear some, I have a lot of noise around here. Let's see. Okay, that's. Now it's uh, and dry, you know. We uh, and it's uh, it's good. So that's uh, 40 meters. This also has uh, uh, it's something called an a Vox on there, VX1, and it has something called an anti-trip. So I guess if you're carrying this, you engage that little circuit in the back, and you won't fall when you're carrying uh, the Swan. Um, So that's the that's now we'll go to 80 meters. I doubt you're gonna hear anything on 80 meters because I think, but we'll, you can hear noise. That's that's certainly one thing you can hear. Uh, let me picking up. Yeah, I don't hear anything on 80. I'll go back to, uh, it's now on, it is on 40 meters, so I'm going to plug the microphone in. You'll hear a contact I have later um, on 20 meters, but I'm just going to go back to 40 and, and show you how to tune it up. Okay, so um, that is, uh, where are we on, oh, we're too high. we got to get down into the band. Alright, so I'm going to get off this guy's frequency and uh, I'll show you how to tune it up. Uh, you put it in the tune CW position and you dip the final. Okay, you dip the final and uh, you normally increase this, but it's, it looks like it's about where I want it to be anyway. I, I will do that, but I, it's too high. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, I can do that. And it's putting out about 250 watts right now. Is it? Uh, yeah, it looks like it's about 250 watts. So there it is. And uh, hello, test. Hello, test. K10YK testing. And so that's that is the Swan Drifty 350. It does drift. But it's nothing like it was. It's nothing like it was before. Thank you, N2 EY. You get. You deserve all the credit. I got lucky. I do listen on radio X-ray. W5 URX calling. Thank you, Tony and Brian for a call. W5 URX. W5 URX. I wonder if you copy me. Here is K1 OIK kilowatt one Oscar Indiana kilowatt. Back to you. Uh, no, it's O I K W five U R K. As I think I got your call correct. It's Oscar India kilowatt. Oscar India kilowatt. Go ahead. Uh, okay, but uh, yeah, we worked uh, back on uh, and, uh, 2018, since we last talked. Uh, September 15th. Name here is Scott Sierra Charlie Oscar Tango Tango, and you're five nine and two. Okay, well, I'm trying to tune you in. 
I'm located on Cape Cod, uh, located on Cape Cod um, in Massachusetts, uh, Scott. Uh, W5URK, do I have your call correct? K10IK. W5URK, so I saw that made a big difference. <laughs> I understand you're running an analog rig there. Uh, we're running here an FTDX 5000, and we're running about 700 watts into a three-element monobander uh, pointed near, near your direction. I could probably pinpoint you a little bit better next go-around. You got a cold morning here, about 29 degrees, but it's sunny there, Bert. Go ahead. Yeah, it's about the uh, same temperature, W5URX. Um, i got to keep my hands off the receiver here. Uh, anyway, W5URX here is K1OIK. Um, Okay, um, t temperature here is about the same. It was about uh, 25. It's totally sunny. Uh, we had a very warm November up until November 12th, and then uh, it's been going down because uh, I was outside doing some QRP work at the ocean, and the temperature was um, about 70 degrees then. So, uh, uh, and this being a Swan 350, they, 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 a, um, they tend to call it a Swan 3 Drifty, but I had a little problem with it, uh, that it was a way off frequency, uh, and now it's just a little bit off. Uh, people couldn't even work me, uh, but now I'm doing a little bit better on this. Uh, so, how is the audio? How does the audio sound? W5URX, Scott, K10IK, Cape Cod. Sounds fine, but uh, tell them to 